Around the world, journalists risk their lives and livelihoods every day to report the truth. In recent months, BBG Networks and the journalists who work for them have experienced dangerous and systematic threats. In China, relatives of six US-based journalists with Radio Free Asia's Uyghur service have been detained and disappeared by Chinese authorities. These relatives, living in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, are being held in re-education camps, which act as open-air detention facilities holding thousands of Uyghurs at a time. In Cambodia, pressure continues and restrictions are increasing after media crackdowns that led to the closure of RFA's Phnom Penh Bureau in September. Two former RFA journalists, Guan Chin and Sotheran Yang, were arrested in November and charged with espionage. They have been denied bail twice, and their families are worried about the appalling conditions in prison. The government has also stopped renewing Voice of America's press credentials, and VOA Khmer stringer Rixi Hall was recently escorted off the parliament premises. In Vietnam, two RFA contributors continue to be held. Nguyen Nhoc Gia, a blogger and contributor to RFA's Vietnamese service, was sentenced to a four-year prison term with another three years on probation for carrying out propaganda against the state. And videographer and contributor Nguyen Van Hoa is being held for, quote, abusing democratic freedoms to infringe on the interests of the state, an offense that carries a maximum sentence of seven years in prison. In Nigeria, the wife and son of VOA Hausa stringer Nasiru Yakubu were kidnapped on February 28th when attackers stormed their Kaduna home. A neighbor who tried to help was killed in the process. Thankfully, on March 2nd, Mr. Yakuba confirms his family was released. In Burundi, VOA Central Africa stringer Eloj Kaneza learned he had been added to a kill list. He has since been evacuated. In Egypt, the state-run media have led organized attacks on local and foreign press, including al -Hura. In the attack, they've tried to discredit the network by erroneously describing it as a television channel sponsored by the Pentagon and intelligence agencies. In Ukraine, Mykola Semena, an RFERL contributor, continues to be prohibited from working as a journalist after he was convicted of separatism last year. On December 18th, the Russia-controlled Supreme Court of Crimea upheld those charges while Semena still faces a suspended two-and-a-half-year prison sentence, the court shortened from three years to two the period during which Semena is prohibited from working as a journalist. Blogger and contributor to RFARL's Ukrainian service, Stanislav Aseyev, has been missing since June 2, 2017. He was forcibly disappeared by Russia-backed separatists. He has not been heard from since. Elsewhere, RFERL Ukrainian service reporter Serhii Nuzhneko was pepper sprayed by police. An RFERL Ukrainian service correspondent found his apartment vandalized, and a Ukrainian stringer was detained and interrogated by border guards. In Pakistan, the Islamabad Bureau of RFERL's Radio Mashal was forced closed earlier this year after government intelligence accused RFERL of airing programs against the interest of the state. Authorities have tried to force Radio Mashal staff to make statements against RFERL. And VOA reporters in Lahore, Peshawar, and Islamabad are taking precautionary measures after a variety of threats have come in. And in Turkmenistan, Saparamed Napaskuliev a photographer and contributor to RFARL's Turkmen service, continues to be held after he was detained by agents of the National Security Ministry on July 7, 2015. No one has seen or heard from him since.